you guys, I made a huge mistake and I bought something I shouldn't have. So if you're looking for a fun unboxing, this isn't the one. Hello everyone, welcome. If you're new around here, let me introduce myself. My name is Caleb, and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, unboxings, luxury travel, daily vlogs, anything that has to do with life and style, you're going to find right here on this channel. So before we go any further, hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and make sure to turn on that bell icon so that way you're notified when I post new content every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. First, I wanted to take a moment and thank all of you for the birthday wishes over the past Last week. It was really sweet to hear from all of you. I mean, I'm filming this, you know, before my actual birthday, but I'm sure I had a great time. Um, I know I plan to go do a little shopping tomorrow, which we'll dive into here later. And um, I'm gonna have some really fun reveals for you guys and unboxings on Wednesday. That aside, let's get into today's unboxing fail. I'm going to apologize now if I sound incredibly negative through this video. I like Coach, I just don't like what I bought. And You'll find out why. So before we get in, let's rewind to autumn winter 2009. Coach and their reveal of the Cambridge collection. I still don't understand their design cues or their reasoning for this collection. So for those of you who aren't too familiar, I'm going to show some of the bags here and then um, go through like pricing and things. It's a very strange collection. So at the bottom end, you have the things like the wallets, which were like 248 to $268, depending on leather type. Um, you had some of the more entry level items like the crossbodies, which were 198, the swing pack type bag at 198. And then as you moved up market through the different handbags, like you went up astronomically in price. So at the low end, you had the Hobo and their Op Art Signature. I hated it then, and looking back, I really hate it now. It did not age well, in my humble opinion. That one was at $468. You're thinking like, okay, that's not that bad. But if you take into account that back in 2009, the majority of the Coach product lineup for handbags usually sold at about 300, maybe 350 max for like your nicer Madison leather bags, patent leather. Um, the Jade back then was really pretty anyway. So as you moved up market, you had the Hobo, I think in the regular leather, sold at $568. The Metallic, I think all the Metallic pieces were boutique exclusives. Um, I think you had to go to the Coach New York store, if, if I'm right. You know, if I'm wrong, correct me down in the comments. But the um, Hobo in leather sold at $568. Metallic was $798. Same for the Alexa Satchel, $648 for plain leather, $798 for the Metallic. And then the crown jewel of this collection, the end all be all, the pinnacle, the flagship, $1,200 for the Alexa Fringe Satchel. Not gonna lie, if I can find that one on eBay at not an astronomical price, I might add that to my collection just from a collector's standpoint. It's a gorgeous bag. You all know my um, taste, my, my preferences, so of course I probably bought one of the clutches from this collection. As you can tell from the photos I've shown, that this collection, it was very modern. It was kind of like downtown, chic, um, really unlike anything Coach was doing at the time or ever has done since. So part of me wonders if maybe this wasn't, you know, Reed Krakow testing the waters before he launched his own um, namesake collection, um, which only lasted, I think, two years, maybe three max. I think he's, I forget who he's designing for now, but his personal collection did not last long. So I'm wondering if maybe he wasn't testing the water out with his um, current coach buyer, and the higher price point, the more modern downtown chic boho styling, just to see how they would feed into the new collection. These bags um, at that price point were really competitive with the bottom end of Louis Vuitton's offerings. A lot of the speedies you could get between like six to 700 at the time. Um, I think the Neverfull is about the same price. The, was the Delightful, the Galliera was only 1200 at the time. So really you were kind of competing with the lower end or the entry level Louis Vuitton shopper at these price points. So it's just really strange that, that they would introduce such a collection that really didn't share any design cues with the rest of Coach's lineup up until that point or even since then. So without further rambling, let's get into the bag I bought and I'm gonna try and keep this as positive as possible because this is a huge fail. All right, first and foremost, if you're a fellow luxury bag enthusiast and if you buy from the pre-owned market, you probably know that this is one of my biggest pet peeves. Do not send me, I don't care how little I spent or how much I spent, do not send my new bag in a padded envelope mailer. You were just asking for this to get crushed, thrown around, beat up, um, 
punctured even if it's by something sharp. Like, you cannot trust USPS to ship this in one piece. Quick story, I once bought a Louis Vuitton, I think my Kindle PM. Um, if you haven't seen my Louis Vuitton luggage collection, link down below. From Japan, it was from a Japanese reseller and they literally sent it in like brown paper, just taped up brown paper. And that thing was literally crushed by the time it got to my house. Luckily it popped back up into shape. It wasn't wrinkled or anything. So I got very lucky there, but don't do this. If, if you resell bags, please don't do this. I paid $9 for shipping. You could have bought a box. Anyway, rant over. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I shared my new coach ski bag with the rabbit fur trim. Link down below if you haven't seen it yet. It's fun, so check it out. And um, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna find another bag that's kind of random that you know not a lot of people probably know about. And then I remember the Cambridge collection, which I absolutely hated in 2009. So I thought it was kind of funny that I bought something from them now, 13 years later, 12 years later. I'm really not good at math. I'm just gonna pull it out. I'm done talking about it. So I thought, you know, maybe I'd get lucky a second time, but lightning doesn't strike twice and it definitely didn't in this instance. So here it is. <laughs> I bought the boutique exclusive Coach Cambridge clutch in the metallic leather and the gold. So this came in gold and silver. And I think you had to go to the boutique or order it over the phone. I don't really remember. I don't think you could just walk in to any coach store or Macy's and, and pick this up. Now this originally retailed for 398. I might've paid like $55 and like $9 for shipping. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Caleb, why are you complaining so much you paid so little? Well, it's the fact that the listing had it as excellent condition, like new, it's further from that. Right off the bat, you know, Coach metallic leather wasn't the best back then, and I, I don't know if it's gotten any better now, but it was very flaky, easily rubbed off. Um, so I have some missing color here on the edges. There's like a chunk missing here, which shows like orange leather on the, underneath. Um, there's a zipper pull that's messed up somewhere too. Yeah, here you can see a lot of orange. I don't know if that's like glue that seeped out or if it's orange. And then right off the bat, when you pull this out of the bag, plastic envelope that they mailed it in, the, the smell of this bag punches you in the face, like boom right off the bat, it stinks. I don't even really want to be touching it right now because it smells so bad, like, yeah, I, I can still smell it that far away. So you can only imagine like, oh, it's, it's, it's bad. It smells like a musty, murky old basement almost with a little bit of cigarettes, a little bit of cats. It's just gross. It's really bad. Anyway. Okay, so styling cues. You're probably thinking to yourself, Caleb, that's not even really your style. Why did you buy this? And you're right. I don't know. I think for me, a lot of the design cues were very similar to that of my favorite clutch, the Balenciaga envelope flap. Um, as you can see, you know, they both have kind of the hardware and points of interest down there at the bottom. They both have the flap. Um, let's just get into it. Okay, so right off the bat, you have the main body of the bag here, and it's done in coaches, kind of like lavender satin lining. Is this the color I would have picked for this bag if I was designing? Personally, no, I think like maybe a really cool ice blue would have looked good with the gold or even like a a really nice kind of like evergreen emerald, like a rich shade of green. This lavender that they were always doing back then is very non-committal in my opinion. Oh, there's another stain. Thank you, seller. And um, the interior, so you've got one slip pocket, one zipper pocket. Coach is always known for their pockets, which is nice. So you've got plenty of organization just in the body of this bag. Now this bag, it does have the Coach Creed back there with the bullseye. So anytime you purchased a full price bag that's been pre-owned or even at the outlet, that bullseye signifies it was originally at a full price boutique or full price line. This has the bullseye. And fun fact, when I used to work for Coach before we'd send off the deletes or that the bags at the end of a season to the outlets, I would very lightly put the bullseye in because I personally hate the bullseye in the bag. Fun fact, if you take the top of like a double A battery, kind of where it like notches out, you can kind of rub or smooth out the bullseye. So if you're, you know, a particular picky collector like I am, that's something that you could use at your disposal to, to get rid of the bullseye. Um, I used to do that, not so much anymore. It doesn't really bother me like that. Yeah, so that's the interior body of the bag, stained lavender satin lining and a bullseye. Now this pocket here is very unique. This could fit a full iPhone Max phone. It might even fit some of your larger Samsung phones. I'm an Apple user, so I don't know, but I mean, it's a pretty generous pocket. If it can fit a Pro Max, it can fit pretty much anything, I'm sure. Now these straps really don't do anything. Like it's not holding up the ruching of the bag. You can't let them go. The ruching, it's all sewn into place, except where it's smashed over here in this corner, which looks great. <laughs> 
pink cellar. The lining really doesn't even go down that far. I think the interior lining legitimately, oh, okay, it does go down pretty far. Okay, my bad. Um, so the, the lining does go all the way to the bottom, of course, and then you have that same strap detail on the back. And then much like my Balenciaga bag that has this pocket here that goes the whole length of the bag, this one has the same thing. So you could fit like another larger phone down in there. Well, once it's folded, once it's folded, you really only have about that. So the fact that they even bothered putting that pocket there, it's pretty pointless. It's a smelly old coach bag. I don't know what else to say. I'm so sorry, you guys. This is not a fun unboxing. I was trying to sneak this in for Halloween. I figured a lot of people would be busy with festivities or trick-or-treating or parties and Maybe not a lot would see this unboxing because it is embarrassing, it's, it's really bad. One of the things to look out for when you're purchasing from the Cambridge Collection, for some reason the hardware that they put on these higher end bags did not stand up and was immediately an issue right off the bat. The very few posts on the purse forum that talk about the Cambridge Collection, this is one of the biggest gripes. A lot of the hardware, it's oxidizing, it's chipping, it's not great. And especially I think the gunmetal is worse than the gold. Um, the gunmetal, like it just flaked off really bad. Luckily on mine, like the zipper pole, like the O-rings look terrible. The D-ring here looks terrible. And then this hardware on the back is starting to show a little bit more age, probably just because that's where you lay the bag down on a table. It's not great. So be very diligent and check your hardware before buying anything from the Coach Cambridge collection. I mean, overall, it's a fun bag. Don't get me wrong. I think I'm mostly just disappointed that the seller kind of marketed this as a excellent use condition when it's, I mean, I'm going to be honest, maybe good at best. There's tons of stains on the interior. The smell is horrendous. Um, it really knocks you out. Like my hand smells now just from touching this. Pretty gross. Anyway, let's see what all fits inside. I'm only gonna have my stuff in there for like a brief minute because it smells so bad and I don't want my things to smell. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So I've been carrying my Marley clutch all week and I absolutely love this bag. It is the perfect clutch. If you haven't seen my review on this one yet, link is down below. Gorgeous bag. So in here, I just have my uh, freeapartments.com EOS chapstick. I had really chapped the lips this week. Couldn't run to the store, so I just stole those. Product key holder, my ratty old Bose headphones. I've been using my Bratza wallet this week. Sado blotting papers. A little pack of gum this week, just because of a little bag. And that is all that I have in there. So let's see how all of this stuff fits into my stinky new coach bag. All right, so at a glance, metallic pierced leather. So here on the inside, let's see, let me get my tester phone. So as you all know on this channel, we use the old iPhone 6 Plus. So this can fit easily inside this little pocket here. And then you just kind of have to pull this out. Okay, maybe it's not as easy as I thought. Anyway, so that's in there. And then on the interior, you just have the zipper here. You have the zipper pocket back here, slip pocket back here. So easily in this bag, I think we could fit the Bratza wallet down there at the bottom. I sold my car this weekend, you guys. I no longer have my four series. So that is why the keys are looking a little light. If you're looking to sell your car, now is the time to do it. I ended up making a pretty substantial profit on my pre-owned BMW 4 Series. So now we just have the Prada six key holder, which we can slide. Let's put this in the slip pocket here at the front. Throw in our gum, blotting paper, uh, this chunky chapstick we'll just toss in there. Headphones, fold this down. Oof, looks a little full. So that is everything in the Coach Cambridge metallic pierced leather clutch from 2009. This smells horrible. <laughs> Here it is from the back. As you can see, it's a little bulgy, but I think it just kind of adds to that ruched look that they have going on. Oh, this looks like a sad face. You have the eyes, the crying, the, the frown. Kind of describes this whole experience, am I right? <laughs> Anyway, that is everything inside the coach bag. All right, you guys. Again, I'm very sorry. This was a very negative, ranty video. I bought a stinky bag that came in a padded envelope mailer. Not happy about it by any means. Is this a bag that I'll keep in my collection? I mean, probably. It's gonna be more trouble than it's worth to try and resell it, then someone else is gonna have to deal with the stinky bag. Um, I'd pester the seller maybe and, and return it, but then I'd pay nine bucks to ship it back again. So I'd basically spend 20 bucks to get 55 back, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. So this is probably going to go into the deep depths in the bowels of my closet, and in three or four years, I'll pull it out and be like, oh, huh, that's that stinky bag I bought three years ago. Hmm, 
and then put it back. I don't know. So maybe I'll do an in-depth video on how to clean a stinky bag. It is what it is. Not every bag unboxing is going to be perfect and you just have to roll with punches. So that's what we're going to do in this instance. All right, guys, I have rambled and complained enough. So I want to thank you for putting up with this video and watching it through to the end. If you have, you're awesome. Let me know down in the comments if you have any of the Cambridge collection or if you even remember it. I mean, this line was only out for like maybe three or four months. A blip in Coach's history. Like I, I really don't understand it. So if someone has more insight on the designs or why, what, and how the Cambridge collection even is, let me know. I'd love to learn more. And I hope you all have a very safe Halloween this evening and get tons of candy. Happy Halloween. Uh, I want to thank all of you for all the birthday wishes this past week. I, it was very phenomenal. I was very touched to hear from all of you. And I have some fun reveals coming up on Wednesday. I going shopping tomorrow. I'm filming this Wednesday night. So my birthday's not until Saturday. You guys are watching this on Sunday. So I plan to go shopping tomorrow. And I have a fun Fendi arriving from Fashion File tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. I have the perfect outfit for that one. And yeah, so I'm gonna give you guys a fun reveal, unboxing video on Wednesday, some birthday highlights. And I know Zane got me something pretty cool. So I'm excited to see that. And yeah, again, happy Halloween. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.